I'm very excited because today I get to show you how to implement the Black Shoals option pricing model in Python, which is probably the most popular well-known option pricing model. So let's just jump into it. So you're gonna see on my screen, I'm actually using the development environment known as Google Collab. And I think it's a good one for these kind of videos because if you have a Gmail account or a Google account, you can just open up a Google Collab file for free. So if you wanna follow along like what I'm doing, you can use this. And you'll just start a new IPYNB file. So you just go file and then uh, and then new notebook, basically. And so this is a Jupyter Notebook style file. All right, so let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is import our necessary library. So if you're using Google Collab, you can just type this out just like I have it here and then run that cell. If you're using a different development environment on your own local computer, like Visual Studio Code or Jupyter Notebooks, et cetera, you're gonna have to do the pip install for both of these libraries uh, in your computer's command prompt. So now that we have imported the necessary libraries, let's define the variables. So there's gonna be five input variables that we need to implement the Black Shoals option pricing model. And so the first one we're gonna call S, and this is the underlying price of the stock. So I'm gonna go with, for all five of these, the examples used in John Hull's famous derivatives book, because that's sort of the Bible on this type of model. And let's set this to 42. And so what that means is that if I wanted to go out into the market right now and purchase one share of this example stock, it would cost me $42. Now, let's define the strike price as K. And so we're gonna set that equal to 40. And what that means is that, let's say, if I own this call option, let's call it a European call option, at the time that the option expires, I have the option to purchase the underlying stock price the underlying stock for $40, regardless of what its current stock price is. So let's say if this uh, option expired right now and the underlying price is 42, I could buy a stock for $40 that was actually worth $42 and my profit or payoff from this option would have been uh, essentially $2 at the end. Okay, now let's set the time to expiration as T and let's just set this to 0 0.5. So we're gonna say this option expires about six months into the future or a half a year into the future. And now let's set the risk-free rate. I'm gonna set this to 10% at 0 0.1. And this might be a bit unrealistic. If you wanted to get more realistic with this, you could go out and look at what is the current yield on a 10-year US treasury bond and use that instead. Okay, and now let's set volatility. And so when you see this sigma symbol for the rest of this uh, uh, this implementation, wherever in the formulas you see this uh, sigma, you will note that we're actually just calling it vol, V-O-L. And let's set that to 0 0.2. So this is basically the standard deviation of the stock's prices. So we're saying that it has a 20% standard deviation, which tells us how much its price moves. And now let's run that. Now let's calculate uh, D1 and D2. I'm not gonna explain too much at this part of the video what they mean, but later on when we're pricing the call on the put, I'll get into, into it a little bit more. So let's just call D1, D1. So D1 equals, now first off, let's put in parentheses the numerator of this formula right here. So we're gonna have to use the log function in the math library, so math.log, and then we're gonna take S, uh, sorry, S over K right in there. So let's do S divided by K. And then once we have that, we can add the second part of the numerator, which is this expression, which is going to be the risk-free rate plus one half, so 0 0.5 times the volatility um, square uh, to the exponent of two. So in Python, we can do this double asterisk and put two. So that means that this is volatility squared. And so once we have all that, I'm going to wrap these once more in parentheses and then multiply that expression by uh, T. And so we've got the numerator right now. Now we just need to take our denominator, which is this part of the equation right here. So let's divide by the volatility multiplied by the uh, square root of T. So we can once again use the math library, math.square root. And then we'll put T in that expression and let's run that. So now we have our formula for D1. Now that we've got uh, D1 calculated, D2 is really easy because D2 is just equal to D1 minus the volatility times the square root of the time to uh, expiration. So let's just say D2 equals D1, and then we'll subtract the uh, volatility times the square root of time to expiration. There we go. 
we got D2, so that was probably the easiest part of the video right there. Now let's calculate the call of the, the, the call option price, right? And so we're gonna call that C and we're gonna use this formula right here. So I just want to say a few things real quick. So whenever you see N wrapped around D1 or D2, or in the case of the put option, uh, N wrapped around negative D2 or negative D1, these are probabilities. And so uh, ND1 is quite easy to define. This is just the probability that this call option exercises in the money. That is, it's finding the probability that the strike price, or sorry, the underlying stock price S will be higher than the strike price K at the time that this call expires. ND1 is a bit harder to define, but it is also a probability. And so you can see there's two components to this formula, right? There's S times ND1, which is we're getting a sort of a weighted average for this, uh, the, the price of the stock. And then we're subtracting out the, uh, the strike price, so the amount we can pay for this stock if we own this call, multiplied by e to the negative rt. So this is just a way to continuously compound the risk-free rate back to today times nd2, which is the probability that the call exercises in the money. So this whole expression just gives us a weighted average um, expectation of whether this call is going to expire in the money discounted back to today, and it's giving us that value. Okay, so now let's just implement it. I know that was sort of a mouthful, but so we're going to say uh, C equals S times. And then so whenever we use these ends, it's actually a, a cumulative distribution function. So we'll say norm dot CDF where CDF stands for cumulative distribution function. And then within that, we're just going to put D1, right? And so we've covered this part of the formula. Now we're going to subtract out K and then we're going to multiply by uh and now we're going to have to use this to the uh, exponent e. So we're going to say math.exp. And within that, we're going to put negative risk-free rate times the time to maturity. And then once we have that, we just multiply by nd2, which is going to use this same function. So norm.cdf. And then within that, we put d2. And now we can run that. And this formula is going to give us our call price. Now we'll value the price of the put. And there's just a few things I want to point out that uh, how we can see that these values differ a little bit. So um, when we saw on the call, we saw that on sort of the left side of this formula was the underlying stock price S. And then we subtracted out that strike price on the right side of the formula. Now that's going to be reversed. So with the put option, we have the strike price on the left side and then we're subtracting out the component with the underlying stock price s on the right side and the reason that is is because if i own the uh, put option um i actually am better off if this price decreases whereas with the call option if i own the call option i'm better off i make more money and my call is more valuable if the uh the stock price s actually increases so they have an inverse relationship the price between a put option and a call option uh, on the same stock Okay, so let's just write this out. So we're gonna say that uh, put is uh, P and we'll set that equal to the strike price K multiplied by math.exp to the negative um, risk-free rate times T. And then we're going to multiply by ND, or N negative D2 where N negative D2 should actually be the uh, probability that this put option expires in the money. So Let's multiply that by norm.cdf, and within that, we'll put negative d2. And one thing I just want to mention is that with these uh, CDF functions, we're assuming it's a normal distribution, which means we'd assume that it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one, like any standard bell curve that you may have seen in the statistics course. Okay, so we've covered the left side of this formula here. Now we're going to subtract out this component, which is just going to be equal to the underlying stock price S minus N neg oh sorry, multiplied by N negative D1, which is just going to be that norm dot CDF negative D1. And now we can actually run that. And here's how we're going to print the results of all of these. Uh, I didn't want to make you guys watch me type all this out, but let's just go ahead and print it. So we can see here that our call option has a price of $4.76 and our put option actually has a price 
of 81 cents. So now that we can see these outputted prices, let's actually uh, change some of the inputs so we can learn a little bit about Black Shoals, right? So keep in mind the call option was priced at 476 and the put option was priced at 81 cents. What would happen if I went up to the top and I increased the underlying price? Let's say let's make it $45. Well, that would actually push the uh, the call option more in the money, so it make, should make the call option more valuable because there's a, a higher positive increase between the underlying price and the strike price, whereas the put option, the opposite should happen. The put option should actually become less valuable because now there's a lower probability that this underlying price is going to be below the strike price when the option finally expire, expires. So let's go to run time, uh, run all, jump back down to the bottom, Okay, and we can see, just like I said, what would happen. The call option price went up to $7.29, and the put option actually dropped to $0.34. Cents. Okay, now keep these values in mind. So if we go back up, and let's say uh, we increase the time to expiration to two years, we should actually see an increase in both of these um, prices because now both call options and put options have more potential time that the price could move in their favor to expire in the money at the end of the uh, the the options life. So let's run that and we should see both increase in value. Run all. There we go. So both increase in value. Now this is worth the call options worth twelve ninety six and the puts worth uh, seventy one cents. One other thing we could do to uh, let's say change the price is change the volatility. So the more volatile a stock, actually, the more its call options and put options are worth. So volatility has a positive correlation on the price of calls and puts. So if we decrease the volatility, let's say instead of 20%, we use 10%, we should go down and we should see both of these stock prices, uh, or both of the call option and put option prices decrease. So let's uh, run all once again. And there we go. We they both they both fell. And so uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, you can check out the code on my website using the link in description. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more content just like this.